Hello and welcome to the Aviation Society podcast. My name is Faz Garda and I'm with Dennis Abel. And we've got our sound engineer here, Aaron Singh. And today we are going to be looking at my favourite aircraft, the well, the future of the Airbus A380, uh, the world's biggest passenger jet, as I'm sure everyone is interested to know. Um, so basically, the reason why we're talking about that today is this seems to be the most affected aircraft by the COVID situation. Um, you know, the future of it looks very unsteady. Almost every airline has retired all of their aircraft. I think there's only a, a handful still flying around, um, which is why I thought it'd be a good, a good topic to look at. Um, so I thought I'd start off with uh, some fun facts about the A380. Go on. So, okay, the A380 is as long as two blue whales put together. And is that a it's baby whales, full grown whales? Two blue whales. whales. Yeah, a baby whale or full grown no, whale? Full grown blue whale. Okay. It was a baby whale. Yes. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, and um, it is also as tall as five giraffes on top of each other. Ooh. Yes. Um, it costs almost $500 million per aircraft. Um, it's one of the safest aircraft to fly on. Um, is and it? <laughs> okay. Carry on. And to be honest, the main reason why it's one of my favorite aircraft is because of its, its size. You know, its size enables it to do so much, makes it very quiet, comfortable, um, but also it gives it more um, special features that other aircraft. Well, what are you laughing for? Because you're describing it like you're playing football on it or something. It's so, you know, you can do so much on it, it's so big. You can actually do that. It's, it's, it's fine. Like football, yeah. Go on then. Um, yeah, my, the main reason why I love it so much is because of the unique features that come with it due to its size. So you've got, for example, um, Emirates' famous, famous bars. Um, you've got Etihad and the residence, where you've literally got like you know a butler and your own room. You've got showers. Singapore Airlines have beds on there. I think it's incredible. Yeah. Um, but as I said, it looks to be on the decline. Um, so, Dennis, what do you reckon is the main reason um, why the Airbus looks set to fail? And do you think it's actually got a future after, hopefully, after COVID? Um, I wouldn't say it's um, set to fail. Um, I think it's at the moment with the demand levels as they are, it's too big of a plane um, to feel to a capacity where it would break even. Um, you know, it's it's it it's it, it's very. Um, it has a high operating cost, not only because it's obviously a class of its own in terms of how much they have to pay for parking and landing fees. Um, having, you know, not being able to fill half or even a quarter of the seats, knowing that it's such a high capacity aircraft, it would be very difficult for the airlines to operate them. Yeah. Uh, which is why, if I'm not mistaken, most airlines have set, said that they will bring them back in service at the later date. I think Qantas said 2023 is when they plan to bring Something them back. Something like that, yeah. So, it, it's, so the airlines are not saying, you know, you know, we will retire the aircraft like, for example, most airlines have done with the 747s. Mm -hmm. They're just saying, at the moment, we can't operate it uh, profitably. So we'll just put it aside uh, and then t put it back in service once the demand picks up again. Now. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree to, to an extent. Yeah. I do think, um, you know, when, for example, actually Air France, they've retired their entire fleet, not coming back. Um, Quantum, Have they? Yeah, not coming back. They're the first airline to say really? thanks for coming. Yeah. Interesting. And well, the reason for that was because it was already an old interior, old product, and they didn't see the point in refurbishing and going through all those costs when demand isn't necessarily there. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, well, also another factor there would have been the fact that obviously Air France is struggling financially and has done for years. Like Air France, KLM, our partnership, yeah. uh, uh, like really struggled and KLM was the one that pulling out, mm -hmm. like financially supporting uh, Air France for its troubles for the last, what, three, four years? Yeah. That's probably why they've done that. Um, Qantas, they actually recently refurbished a few A380s um, and then they went straight into the, the was it Californian Desert? I think it yes. was. Um, for for long-term long storage. Yeah. Uh, which is a shame, but mm. you know, what can you do? Um, Qatar Airways don't see it coming back for at least a couple of years, according to their CEO. Um, that being said, um, ANA are confident that it will play a dominant role in the uh, Japan to Hawaii leisure uh, market. So, you know, there is still optimism around the A380 certain, in uh, certain, certain markets. Yeah. Um, I completely, uh, I don't know who obviously made that comment, but I, I sort of, see the viewpoint because 
right now, what airlines are doing is they're looking for markets that are popping up for you know a couple of weeks and then disappearing again. So, for example, when in America, when the lockdown uh, lessened in Florida, yeah, um, people from across of America were flocking down to Florida on a like a quick getaway holiday kind of thing, and there was sort of like all the airlines put an aircraft on a uh, number of flights a day, got all going down to Florida. Yeah. Now that market is now gone because you know people don't want to do that no more. Yeah. So if, for example, the demand suddenly spikes massively, it's better to put an A380 in there and, yeah. and capitalize from that demand than you know having a couple of triple seven flights. The question is though, can you um, can you afford to have the A380 around year in year out? Um, you know, you might have that demand for two weeks, but is that demand going to be maybe elsewhere for another two weeks, elsewhere another two weeks? Yeah. Is, that, is that sustainable? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I see what you mean. Yeah, because even though you may be able to capitalize on the demand in, for those two weeks, maybe then after those two weeks, the, there's no demand again exactly. for a month or two, yeah. which would have obviously the cost would offset the profits gained from utilizing 100%, 100%. it. 100%. Now, I mean, if I was to liken it to another aircraft, I'd say, and it, I know it's sort of the polar opposite, but at the same time, it's, it's sort of similar to the Concorde. They're both incredibly, you know, incredible feats of engineering. They yep. do what they set out to do incredibly well, but they almost do it too well to the point, to their own detriment. Yeah. The A380 is too big. The Concorde was too, was so fast, but it was also not economically viable. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, that seems to be the same road that the A380 is going down. Um, I, I kind of agree with that viewpoint. I mean, Concorde failed ultimately because not only because it was so fast, obviously went supersonic and therefore created uh, sonic booms. Yeah. And which meant majority of the countries in the world banned it from uh, from going supersonic over their land, over their airspace. So the only actual flights that the Concorde was able to utilize its engineering was transatlantic or tri um, Pacific, over the Pacific Ocean. Yeah. That's it. Nowhere else it could fly that fast. Yeah. Which was you know, kind of, kind of, um, it's downside really because it couldn't be utilized fully as, as it should have been. Niche. And it's the same for uh, A380 really because, you know, because of its size, yeah. most of the airports had to, like, you know, adapt the airports around it. And majority of the airports haven't done that, which is why you can't use the A380 in majority of the airports around the world. A prime example is Birmingham Airport. Yeah. Birmingham Airport had to extend their runway, mm -hmm. cost a lot of money, took reinforce their run, uh, the taxiways because they wasn't strong enough to sustain it. Yeah, yeah. it's just a lot of cost then for the airports to operate the aircraft. Yeah, um, and that obviously then comes down to does the airport find it economically viable yeah. to do that? Um, that okay, so. What are air, what air, what are airlines doing? You know, to replace their A380s. Why are they moving away from it? Mm -hmm. um, from what I can see, I I think that the main reason they don't want to stick with A380s anymore is flexibility and also um, the environment and sustainability. Right. You look at the A350. You look at the 787. They are much more flexible for airlines. Yeah. With an A380, you sort of gotta go gung ho. Um, yeah. You go it's all, all in for that. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. A350, 787, those kind of, even 777X, yeah. um, you've got more flexibility, you can do more stuff with it. Um, and that's that seems to be what air, airlines are... Um, or the A330 Neo. A330 Neo is another one. Uh, that seems to be... And, and, and the thing is, because these smaller aircraft are now able to achieve such incredible uh, range, um, that USP that the A380 had is also non-existent. Yeah. I mean, it, it kind of also reinforces what the, where the trend of the airline industry was going uh, over the last couple of years, where you know it's moved trans transitioning from hub and spoke networks to more point to point networks. Even full service carriers are doing more and more point point to point routes and less and less um, hub and spoke. Yeah. Which which point to point you will almost never have. A, an A380 fly there because the, the demand won't be there. Mm -hmm. Whereas you can put, you know, an A350, uh, 7, um, 787, A330neo. You know, you could put those by body aircraft on there, and and they'll still make profit for you because most of them will be uh, full. Yeah. Now, um, if you okay, so the main airline when it comes to the A380 is obviously Emirates. They they own almost half of all A380s produced. Um, they have. They currently have 115 A380s, uh, with eight deliveries still pending, mm -hmm. which is incredible. Um, so, what 
what will they do as you know what they've got so many sat at the moment just you know in storage they've got a few flying they fly to Cairo with the A380 they fly to Moscow Heathrow um, I think they just added another route I can't remember where it is too though so they've got they've got a few routes with the A380 but you know 150 A380 you know that they've got like five routes with it so that's not going to work yeah um, they will hope for sure that there's going to be a vaccine something's going to happen um, what do you reckon will happen? What do you reckon Edwards are going to do to uh, solve this problem? It's a very interesting topic. Um, I heard, well, I feared that Emirates would, would, you know, do what Qantas did and retire them for a couple of years until the demand picks up again. Um, because I heard that uh, an Emirates was scheduled to fly out to, I can't remember where it was, I think somewhere in UK, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, for a cabin refurbishment. Right. But obviously, the lockdown started and that uh, even though the plane was already flown out there they basically said scrap that let's not do the refurbishment now just send it back right. which to me suggested that you know they're kind of second guessing themselves they're kind of not believing in maintaining these aircraft no more mm -hmm. which is very worrying but i think what the airline should try to do is obviously they have what 158 did you say 115 115 115 aircraft with eight coming You'll, you'll, realistically, the current routes that they are operating, you only need, what, 20 to 30 max to be able to operate them? Yeah. Because um, there isn't enough Not demand. Because okay. there isn't enough there. So that leaves them with, what, 70, 80 aircraft just lying around. Mm -hmm. I think they should try to utilize them where possible and maybe just do cargo flights. So we'll come on to cargo in a minute. Um, but just before we do, so... I, so I know for a fact that Emirates were looking at diversifying their portfolio. At the yep. moment, they only have 777s and A380s. Mm -hmm. They're the only two aircraft they have. Um, and that sort of restricted them in certain ways. Um, they're not able to fly to all the airports they want to fly to. Um, and it doesn't give them the flexibility that they want. Um, especially the A380. Mm. Now, the A380 is their flagship plane. That's it's on all their posters. That's what attracts a lot of people. Yeah. I for it sure. It looks awesome. Yeah, I would almost consider going to Heathrow to fly on the E380. Because at the moment, well, I don't know with lockdown, but at the moment they were only flying triple seven to Birmingham, right? Right. So people would consider flying to Heathrow, going to Heathrow and flying the E380, as opposed to just going to Birmingham, which is around the corner for us. Yeah. Um, and using the triple seven, it is that much of a pull. Um, but from an airline economic point of view, it might not be the case. But if there is an airline that's going to pull through it, it's going to be Emirates, I'd imagine. Yes. They've got the backing of the state, um, and they're you know the biggest international. Airline I mean, yeah, well. they already received two billion uh, bailout package from the government. So. And there you go. And in 2019, and this is uh, further reinforcing their change in strategy. In 2019, they ordered 50 A350 900 XWBs mm. um, in the Dubai Air Show, and they. Have also got 126 triple Xs on order, um, and they substituted some triple seven Xs for 37 eight sevens. Okay. So that goes to show, you know, although they are looking at still triple seven X, A350 900, they're still massive planes. Mm. Um, the seven eight seven sort of it shows that they're trying to diversify a little yeah. bit, which they didn't do previously. But anyway, moving on from that. Um, so yeah, you, you were talking about cargo, and we've seen a lot of airlines. Um, recently during the pandemic temporarily convert their planes into cargo. Yeah. Um Qatar Airways, Emirates, uh, British Airways. But, you know, they're all they're all they're all practicing that sort of thing. Um, but that raises the question, will airlines look at making their A three eighties into permanent cargo aircraft? Is cargo gonna play a bigger role than we think in the future? Now there is there was actually plans back in the day uh, when the A380 was first coming out for an A380F. It had 25 orders, firm orders, from FedEx, INFC and UPS. However, um, delays to the production of the first um, passenger A380 for Singapore Airlines, who was a large, com large customer, uh, meant that they cancelled their orders and went for other aircraft instead. Um, which, which basically rendered the A380F you know, uh, dead because it never had any demand. Mm -hmm. um, however, there is a company called Lufthansa Technic yep. and they are working on a P2F which is a passenger to freight 
A380. The customer is yet to be revealed. Mm -hmm. um, however, it is certainly something that they're looking at doing. Um, and it's certainly something that airlines could look at doing as well, should cargo play such a big role in the future. I, I do think um, that would it would be something that airlines would be looking at. For example, obviously not all the 747s are retired. Mm -hmm. And obviously 747s F was the biggest, well, one of the biggest um, cargo airplanes out there, aircraft out there um, that would do cargo runs. Um, if the demand on specific routes were was big enough and they were looking for replacement to that aircraft, yeah. why not buy like an A380 from an Emirates that no longer needs them, obviously get massive discounts on that and then convert it into a freighter? Like yeah. why not do that? Well also we could we could see UPS FedEx jumping in and exactly. but at the same time we could see a change in strategy from the full service carriers yeah. of A380s. Yeah. Because you know there might be less traveling physically, mm. but I think that might actually encourage more online deliveries, um, which obviously means more mm. effort, uh, which means that you know airlines might look at. I mean, even even when the vaccine comes out, um, um, like experts estimate, it will take you know upwards of nearly two years for the vaccine to be distributed across the planet. Imagine how much cargo, uh, you know, distribution will be required to give it to distribute across the entire planet. It will be a lot, and obviously because it's a vaccine, it's a very precious resource. It, needs to be it has to be maintained way. in certain conditions. Yeah. Has to be delivered quickly. It expires, I think, it was 14 days, depending obviously which uh, vaccine producer and so on and so on. So there's a lot of like, you yeah. know, conditions to it. I think the primary way for it to be delivered around the world will be air. It will be air freight. Yeah. And if, and obviously at the moment with majority of the aircraft not flying. And therefore, their um, you know belly is flying, not flying, so the belly cargo is not being uh, carried across. Um, they will have to look at freight companies. Yeah. Um, interesting, actually, is uh, I was on Twitter and I follow the Sheikh of Dubai on mm -hmm. Twitter, as you do, as I do, <laughs> and he recently got the COVID vaccine injected. Okay. I didn't even is, know there was is, a vaccine. Is it effective? Oh, from what I heard, there is four companies working on the vaccine. Well, five technically, because there's three in America or two in America. One in UK. AstraZeneca, I think it is. One in, in one in one in Russia for sure, and I think Chinese are trying to develop their own. But I'm not entirely sure. I haven't done much research. On it. But there are vaccines out there. They're just looking. They're waiting for obviously the respective governments to clear them to be. Which is why I find it very interesting that the head. The, you know, the leader mm. took it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't even know there was a vaccine, but maybe it's closer than we think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I think I think cargo is actually the uh, the next stop for the E three eighty, and that's unfortunate because yes. you know there's so many unique features that you, you simply can't get on other aircraft. No, like imagine taking a shower at you know thirty five thousand feet in the air. Exactly. Like, that's just mad. It's, it's stupidity. Really. Mm. Um, have your own butler. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, obviously, it's incredibly expensive. Yeah, but, of course. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a feat of engineering, and I think it should be marvelled at for many years to come, hopefully. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it, really. Uh, keep it short and sweet, as <laughs> we said. Uh, yeah, well, that was pretty much our take on the future of A380. Uh, we'll probably do more of these, uh, maybe different aircraft next week. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's pretty much it from us. Uh, like, comment, subscribe down well, below. <laughs> follow our socials. Uh, yeah. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. Facebook, yeah. Um, Unify, that app no one uses. Yeah, <laughs> they'll all be linked in the description, <laughs> I, I hope. Uh, and yeah, thank you very much for listening. Thank you, bye. And on to our sponsor. Um, this week's sponsor is Almat Aviation. Um, are you interested in piloting or fixed wing aircraft or helicopters? Um, would you like to obtain your own PPL? Uh, well then Almat Flying Academy is the one for you. They're based out of Contra Coventry Airport and they offer industry competitive pricing for all their flying experience, lessons um, and aircraft rentals. Uh, just go to www.almat.co.uk to find more. Um, also for all of you who are signed up to our society, um, members you get exclusive discounts so you can reach out to us to find more about this, about um, Almat's discounts for you guys. Uh, if you by any chance want to sponsor the podcast with a product of yours, um, please get in touch with us. Our social medias are linked down below.